Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Rack of Lamb Roulade. Today I'm going to be grilling a couple racks of lamb with unique preparation. I'm going to butterfly out the loin while keeping it attached to the bones. We're going to make this really tasty mint pesto, slather that all over the loin, roll it back up, tie it in place, and then we'll cook it on the Kamado Joe. I'm gonna start by getting the Kamado Joe rolling so it's nice and hot when we're ready to cook. Now, as you can see, we've got our lump charcoal banked to the back so that we'll have a direct grilling area and a less direct grilling area. We'll nestle in some of our starter cubes. And we'll just leave that open to get going. So what we have here are a couple racks of New Zealand grass-fed lamb. And we're going to do a little bit of cleaning up on these. You can see we've got some silver skin here, up here. They've started that Frenching process, but we can do better than that. We're going to clean those up just a little bit. Now when it comes to these bones, honestly the best way to do this is get those gloves off and get your hands dirty. I mean, your hands should be clean, but you know what I mean. Start at the top, kind of peel that back with your nail and then pull down. See, nice and clean. And we're just gonna work our way down the loin, removing that membrane from each and every one of these and any meat that's left behind too. This can get a bit tedious, but stick to it like any good thing. It's worth the hard work you put into it, especially when you're paying, you know, 17, 18 dollars a pound for this New Zealand lamb. You want to make sure you take care of it and treat it right. All right, last one here. Cleaning this guy up. Now speaking of membranes, like the membrane that goes around the bone, there's that membrane on the back side of the ribs. You guys are familiar with this if you've done uh, pork ribs. I could show you what it's like to try and remove this thing, but it's much more difficult than it is with pork. So I typically just leave it there because we're never really eating through the back side of the rib anyway. All of that meat is on the loin down there at the front side. All right, so then I'm just gonna trim up a little bit of this excess uh, fat and membrane here, make that all uniform. And then we're gonna come after this silver skin. So just slide your knife right underneath it, lift that up, angle your knife upward so you're not taking any meat with it. And that's what that should look like, no meat left behind. And just work your way down. And then on the smaller end, you're going to have this nugget that sits on the outside. Typically, I just leave it there. You cook it with the rest and eat it. But for what we're doing today, that's going to get in the way of the butterflying. So I'm going to remove that. There's a natural separation there, so you can do a lot of it by hand and then just finish it off with the knife. But there's nothing wrong with this piece of meat, so throw it on the grill right next to these later. It'll be a nice little snack. All right, then at the bottom side of these bones here, you want to just feel around, make sure that you don't have any extra chunks of bone sticking out. Sometimes, you know, some of that chine or something gets left behind. I don't feel anything on this one, which is great. We just clean this up just a little bit. All right, now that thing is looking pretty good. So now that we've got these cleaned up, it's time to get them butterflied. You're gonna come in with your knife right here, and then if you can visualize, you're basically going to be slicing around in a spiral and unfolding this. So just sort of pull the meat back as you make your slices. The goal here is to have as even a layer as possible. And then just being that it's smaller at this end, you're going to kind of taper in this way. But it won't matter when it's all rolled back up, it'll be back in its original position. Now those racks are prepped and ready to go, so let's make that mint pesto that I was talking about earlier. So we're going to start off with three cups of mint leaves.
just loosely packed. We're gonna add to that a third cup of pistachios. So obviously we're, we're not making a true pesto today, but this is kind of in the same vein. You think about your herb, your nut, we've got a third cup of Parmesan cheese, and then three cloves of garlic. And then I'm gonna get some citrus in there, just the zest off of this lemon. And you can go a little bit rustic with this because it's gonna go into the mix and get pureed down. So the smaller side of the box grater works really well for this. So there's the zest of one lemon. So we'll throw the lid on there and get this pureed down. All right, so we're not going for smooth or anything, but uniform in size, and I think we're getting there. So we'll start this back up, and then we're gonna add one third cup of extra virgin olive oil. We'll just slowly drizzle this in until it's all the way incorporated. So we're working this down into this pesto consistency, and this is looking pretty good. I might just add a touch more oil, but we're almost there. Okay, I really like the look of this. We're just gonna finish it off with a little bit of salt and pepper. Got that hickory smoked salt. I'm gonna get some fresh cracked pepper. One quick spin and we'll be done. Well, now it's time to bring everything together so we can head over to the grill. All right, so we're gonna unroll both of these, butterfly it out. We'll start out with our mint pesto paste. Spread that out into an even layer. We took a little taste of the mint pesto to make sure where it's at. You want to check the salt level uh, before you get it on the meat, obviously. Uh, but it's really nice. It's, it's bright. That mint and the lemon really make it bright. So what it really needs is just a little bit of bite now. So I'm gonna add a little bit of our eight second ride seasoning from uh, Cattleman's. As you can see, it's got chili flakes in it. So this just adds a little bit of heat. And we're simply just gonna roll this right back up the way it was. Just like that. Let's get the other one done before we start tying them off. Look at that. Look at it. Isn't that pretty? So make this part easy on yourself by uh, throwing your twine into a mason jar here. It never rolls away that way. And then you can cut links pretty easily. Make sure you go just a little bit longer than you think so you don't come up short. So we're just gonna come in between each and every bone and tie these off. All right, I'm gonna come back to the other end, then we'll do one right in the middle and we'll fill in the gaps. You loop this around two, three times. It gives you a nice grip as you're pulling this tight. Stays in place so you can get that double knot. One last knot to make here. Look at that, how pretty is that? Then we're just gonna hit the outside of these with a little bit more of that eight second ride. We're not going too heavy or anything. 
Just enough to give us a little bit of color and a little bit of heat. All right, we'll let those set up for a few minutes before we get them on the grill. The Kamado Joe is running at 400 degrees. We've got it set up for direct grilling with the grates in the top position of the divide and conquer system. So we're gonna start off over the direct heat right here. Just stand these up. We gotta be careful not to burn these bones so they don't break. Because if I can help it, I'd rather not have to wrap them in foil today. All right, so we're getting some good color on the underside there. I'm just gonna lay these down, try and get some color on the front side as well. Here's our little snacks. Can't forget about those. All right, check out the color on that. Really nice. Looking good over there too. Now we're shooting for about 135 on the internal of these guys. And we are just creeping up there. So it's time to pull these off. So in case you're wondering what I was talking about when getting those bones over the direct flame, that's what happens. You'll break a couple off. And that's on me. Well, let's slice in here and see what it looks like. Look at that. Isn't that just beautiful? So juicy. Look at that juice just dripping off of there. I'm just gonna get rid of this string, have myself a bite. Oh man, so tender. Of course, mint and lamb, classic. The pesto application of that mint though, that's a game changer. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all of the products featured in today's video. If you enjoyed the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to the sauce.atbbq.com. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.